Advice Podcast, where we take your sticky, sexy situations and turn them into sexy, sicky situations. Simply put, we are a sex and dating advice podcast. We find questions either online, roaming the wilds, or we get them from our wonderful listeners, or we get them from people in the audience. And our last live show was a lot of fun. I gotta shout out the audience member who asked us the beige flag question, yeah. because it led to to a lot of fun with everybody else. So y- y'all, y'all rock. It got to the point where we were so unsure of what a beige flag was that like, I'm still not happy with my answers because I, I'm like, surely there's something. There's got to be. And it's, I just it's like, a very interesting nuance. Yeah. Where it's like, it's it's not a bad thing, but it's the thing that pings. I think I think our answers work, but you know, we're not going to tell you what those are because you got to wait till the episode comes out. It's or true. come to the next live show. Come to the next live show. We don't have a date on that yet, but we'll, yet. we'll let you know. We'll let you know. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about... You know the way I don't tell you the title? I won't even tell you what it's about. It's that good. Oh, okay. That's one. So, so just a question. A question. Um, sexing, ruining your life? She broke my dick and didn't even show remorse. How do I move past? One person casual sex. Uh, are you ready to get into it? Yeah. This one's long. This okay. is by Disastrously Naked. Uh, my boyfriend Gary and I have been together for almost four years. He's 29. He's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. We communicate very openly and trust each other. At the beginning of our relationship, before we became exclusive, we had a couple of threesomes arranged by me. I'm bi. I was also seeing a couple of ladies at the time, so it wasn't like unicorn hunting or whatever. Once things got serious, we agreed the open relationship wasn't our thing, and we'd like to only sleep with each other. It was fine for a few months, but eventually, after we moved in together and I was suddenly around this dude and his penis all the time, I started getting this annoying itch, metaphorical, not an STI. I want to be with a woman again. I want to see him with a woman again. But I didn't want to give up on monogamy. Well, at least not entirely. So we had a few talks. He said he felt the same. He wants to see me with a woman again, have a couple of adventures, etc. We came up with a solution. We would plan to have one of these adventures once a year around our sex anniversary. That way, it was rare enough for it not to disrupt our monogamous arrangement, but still brought back a little adventure. It seemed perfect. So we did that for the first three years without a problem. I know enough queer slash bisexual people where I live, so not a problem finding humans who are interested in doing the deed with us once a year. It was a bit harder finding people we both found attractive because we have different tastes, but it always worked out in the end. A couple of months ago, my dad, 55, had a really bad stroke. I've been really close with my mom, and they are honestly amazing people and parents, so I went back home for a bit to help my mom out. I usually don't work remotely, but my job does offer that flexibility, so I got myself organized, come home for three to four months, help my mom get through it. Gary was planning on joining me after a couple of months, the intention of staying for three weeks. Uh, it's the most he can do remotely without becoming an issue. And it was approaching our fourth year anniversary, and it was time to reach out again to someone who'd like to join us horizontally. I did not want to miss out on our annual kinky moment because my dad's health stuff. He's okay, but needs a lot of rehab and to relearn stuff. And honestly, I needed something to look forward to. The air's heavy here. Figured we could rent an apartment for a couple of weeks and do it there. Here's when it all went to shit. And since I don't know a lot of people around here, not in that way at least, I decided to look for someone in an online kinky platform you can exchange messages with like-minded humans. Not a lot of options here, but we found a good match. A lady. Leslie, 42-year-old female, not too far away, not very experienced, but was looking to make up for lost time and getting it on with online strangers. Since it isn't a huge city, we didn't exchange personal slash identifying details and we're just chatting. Chatting became poorly lit, faceless attempts at sensual photography, underwear still on, that progressed into semi-nudes, that progressed into mutual nipple displays, which escalated to a photo of my lips around Gary's fleshy appendage in his fully erect state which progressed to Leslie bravely offering us a detailed gynecological tour, which may have been a bit too graphic to actually be sexy, but still worked. Three photos, one, two, three. On the third photo, a tattoo is visible on her wrist that had not been visible the previous exchanges. I know that tattoo. Uh Uh-oh. Leslie is my Aunt Donna. Oh, no. 46, female, currently separated. This happened Monday. I was dry heaving. My inner mind has been continuously screaming a long, despaired wail since. This woman changed my diapers, wiped my butt, cleaned my snot, my puke even. I've sat in her lap. Now she, unknowingly, has a photo of my lips partaking in the unholiest of activities. My probable future husband has seen her exposed in a way that might make a pimp giggle and blush. I blocked her and ghosted her, which is shitty, I admit, but I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do. Should I say something privately after Sunday lunch? She always comes to visit and help out during the weekends. Can I betray her trust and this secret to the grave? I don't know what to do with Gary either, who repeatedly goes into an overwhelmed state of blankly staring at nothing whenever he remembers. Oh, no, he he knows, too. We'll see her on Sunday. and He is also mortified. 
He has a redhead and turns almost purple with shame when my mom mentioned my aunt yesterday during dinner. His complexion is not ideal for secrecy. <laughs> How do I come clean to my aunt? Should we? Oh, boy. It's the, the, the family stuff is always tough for me because I do think, you know, operating on a policy of truth is usually the way to go. But I think knowing like thinking how you feel about the situation mm -hmm. why would you inflict that further on i would say the more vulnerable of the parties yeah specifically because she's in a position of quote-unquote power by being your elder by being someone who used to look after you also right? she's in the position of not power because she's going through a separation and is new to this and, you know, presumably isn't as sexually adventurous as you are and blah, 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 blah. So it's like, this will inflict far more harm on her. Yeah. It's it's like, if, if this was her first foray into exploring her sexuality and being like, cool, the first time I did it was with my niece. That's going to be a lot of trauma and a lot of road blockage for her to move forward mm -hmm. on in this journey. I unfortunately, I really do think this is something you take to the grave. You can never tell her. I you think you can never tell her. Yeah, right? there's you've got to find a way cannot. to to reconcile this between you and your partner privately. Mm -hmm. I think that the there's no way. I don't think that the, like, this goes well for like. I don't think like best case scenario. It's awkward between you guys forever if you tell her. Best case, it is it, like that. I think is worst case. It's terrible. And they're like, I mean, there's, there's, I, I don't know what the worst case is because at one point I'm saying like, you ruin her life, her, her life. She doesn't want to ever like pursue mm -hmm. things online. She doesn't want to do sexy things. You she drive her back to her terrible husband. Alternatively, she's from. she finds it very sexy. And now it's, <laughs> that's, really, that's actually the worst case. Right? She's like, no, I'm, I'm still down. Yeah. Like that. Like <laughs> what if, what if she doubles down on it? That's terrible. If she just says, I know. Yeah. I know the whole time. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now, what's the tattoo? Is it a super common one? Live, laugh, love on the... Because everyone's <laughs> aunt has that. Yeah, that's a good point. It's just like a flower. Oh, shit. Yeah. You're the only person with a flower. Um, yeah. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. My tummy's just not happy today. I'm going to add that out. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like... You can't. You can't. It's just... It's like, look at the cost benefit, right? Yes, it's going to suck that you guys have to keep this secret. But mm -hmm. like... It's, that's a much better cost to pay than telling them because that doesn't really alleviate anything. It's not going to make it less awkward. Yeah, it, it doesn't fix your problem. Yeah. Right? Like, I understand the idea of being like, ah, shit, we ghosted her and that might hurt her self-esteem. You know what's going to fuck her up more? Yes. It's being like, hey, the ghosting's fine. That happens. You know what I mean? Hopefully they had fun. Don't think about that part too hard. Yeah. Don't think about In fact, don't think about this at all. This is one of those things you pack in the box in your brain and then you hide the box and that's it. You're done. And the thing is, you did nothing wrong. No. Is it bad? Absolutely. But you didn't know. Mm -hmm. It was anonymous. It was spur There's of the no moment. shame. It's just unfortunate. Yeah, it sucks. Yes. You know what I mean? It's not like you heard weird noises in a in a room and you snuck in and watched your parents fuck or yeah. something. Right? Like that. That's a much different thing than being like you. I don't know. I was trying to think of like a family. <laughs> Damn. Uh, it, it, you, it's you, not you, like you knew. And months later, we're like, oh, you're right. We can't keep this doing gross. this. Like, yeah. After like months of like jacking it to Aunt Donna or, or finding out that your her, you know, your partner knew, mm. like saw the the tattoo and was was too turned on to tell. You know what I mean? Like it was it's an unfortunate situation that mm -hmm. you guys just have also, to deal with. It's the least bad for him. Yeah. So I think it's she's not going to know he's going to get over it. It's the most bad for you. And you seem OK, <sighs> I hope. It's yeah, I, I like I, that's what I'm saying It's like the, if you don't tell them it's worst for you and if you can deal with it all gravy, baby. I, yeah, I don't all gravy. All gravy. I this sucks. This is really bad. But like, I don't think telling them helps. No, tell, um, tell also, them doesn't how help. You, like, how do you do that? Like, hey, hey, Ann, can, can we yeah, just Leslie, Leslie, come here at the come barbecue. Here. Can you just come here? Um, <laughs> you know, you know the way you got a picture in your inbox of lips around a dick. My lips, his dick. Yeah, we saw your vagina in such graphic detail. We didn't find it sexy. Maybe you can do a little bit of good here. Maybe this is a unblock a, them. Be like, you were too hot and wonderful. Block them again. No, just casually mention in conversation. That she's got know, a nice puss. 
know that maybe she doesn't do a fucking gynecological tour because you were like, oh, yeah. it was a little much. And I really don't think anyone needs an interior like tour of your vagina. Yeah. Um. Honestly, this and this is just me. I'm sure it, it gets many people off, but like. Just a picture of the vagina is weird to yeah. me. I'm just I, like, there's. I, that- I once got the worst like sex where it was someone uh, on like the reverse cam, and it was just like the most intense like close up of them just mashing their clit, and then like l- like the camera would like shift up to like them double chinning, staring down, which like no one like that's not a good angle for anybody. You yeah. know, when you you turn your camera and you're accidentally looking up at you, that's not great for any of us. So yeah. I was like, you know. She tried, but that wasn't the best way to do yeah. it, you know? So maybe just find a way maybe find a way to casually bring up that like that's not that's not maybe, great. Maybe be like, hey, I have a friend who's on this like sexy app. I don't know what that's called, because we would never do that. Yep, great. Ever. Wink. Don't wink at her. Ever. Again. But also you can never wink at this one. No. Um, you just be like, oh, some people are so sexually free and I'm impressed by them, but that's not us. And then you say she got this weird vagina tour, and then she'll be well, like, "Well, no, you can't mention it. That's too no. specific." Okay, sure. She you got can't a be bad like, oh, sex. I, what? What was your fucking plan? I'm saying, like, talk about it as being like, "Oh, have you seen that TikTok thing where guys are complaining about really graphic I vaginal?" Think what tours? I'm saying was kind of close. You say a friend of mine is on apps, and then you get to say, "I would never." Uh, be okay, on those yeah, apps. a friend. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I thought mean, you were saying that. No, they would never be on those apps. Wink. Yes, wink. And then she'll be like, cool. It definitely wasn't them. And then she'll be like, hmm. Maybe I should tone down yeah. the puss tours. And maybe she'll be like, ooh, what if it was their friend? That could be awkward. I got to be more careful. And yeah. then it's win, 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 win. Then you just say fucking pale ass McGee over there is choking or allergic to something, <laughs> yeah. right? Why is he purple? It's it's fine. It's a TikTok trend. Yeah. Oh, he's doing the thing where it's the Joffrey trend. Yeah. Where you try to look like Joffrey when he dies at the end. It's called eggplanting. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Yeah, it's a new thing. All the kids are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Gary's 34. <laughs> Don't tell him. Uh, yeah, you gotta... You can't tell her. No. Nor can't. should you. Uh, this is from Pastor Princess 595 I've been exposed to sexting with random strangers a lot since I joined Reddit. Are there disadvantages to it? Will it affect my sex life the way that porn does forming unrealistic expectations on, or something like that. I wish I knew if they were male or female. I'm assuming female based on passenger princess. Maybe, maybe not, but I don't know. I feel like that, like there's, I think, I think the answer changes it rarely, you know what I mean? Like I, I think the, the, the dynamic of sexting changes depending on if you're a dude or not. I guess like I, I very rarely have we seen a, question where it's like oh my girlfriend has a porn addiction and death grip and you know what i mean so if we're talking like will porn affect me in the same way well for me i'm just thinking like if if you have never sexed before and all of a sudden you are sexting i i think the danger of it is that like much in the way that men are are compliment starved if you're now getting a bunch of sexual attention you might be either too eager to to force it okay you might be too eager to force this like connection with people that aren't strangers. Like if you're in a in a community on Reddit or somewhere where sexting is the point, hmm. that's not always the point on like dating apps yeah. or or you know Instagram DMs and stuff like that, where it's like I'm worried this is will You'll become your skew your yeah, yeah. It'll be your mm-hmm. this will be your personality, and you won't know how to flirt without getting sexual yeah. or overtly sexual. So step one, know that this is not the norm, and yeah. nor should it. Also, like. I would love to know, is it just they post being like, I'm a woman. And everyone's like, here you go. Here you go. Or are they engaging in a community? Yes. Because if not, like, I, I'm not really sure what the danger is. Also, are you getting good sex? Or are you participating sex? as well? Because you just say exposed to yeah. sexting. Are people just sending you inappropriate messages? Because that's much different than sexting. Yes. Harassment and sexting are two. Sexting implies, and I'm going, this is how I'm operating, is that mm-hmm. it's a back and forth. It's, yes. a, it's a communication. You're, it's a participation yeah. thing. And a, a consent and willingness thing. Yeah. So I'm assuming I'm going to operate under the guise of you. you are a willing participant in this. Maybe, maybe not. So I guess also, are they good? Because as we've literally just talked about, you can get bad sex. Yeah. And if that's the case, like if you're getting all this perfect good stuff, yeah, maybe it will skew your shit when you encounter whatever channels you're being sent in real life. And it's not got a filter. It doesn't have this great. And the angles. The angles and the, you know, the the prep. Because now it's, now it's got a scent. 
Now it's got a, a moisture to it. It's not a dry clinical phone screen. Yeah. There's no lighting. Mm-hmm. There's no, yeah, exactly. you know, there's no angle. There's no, it's just like, it's just a dick or a clit yeah. or a whatever. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, there it is. Realize that, you know, much like porn, sexting is, you know, there's, there's an element of curation. Of curation is a great word. And I was going to say like, farcery, which is not really. And like, there's, you have the ability to craft, right? So sexting doesn't necessarily, like, if someone's really, really good at sexing, it might not mean that they're really good at dirty talk, right? So, like, no, that's the other thing, right? Like, this is a this is someone in in like the comfort of their own home, in like a, a safe environment with no immediate pressure. They can take their time. They can erase. They can they can move words around and edit and whatnot. Whereas, like in the heat of the moment, so I, I think there are there's a level of expectation that could be set here. As long as you go forward being like, this is a a sexual activity in and of itself. Mm -hmm. It is a contained sexual. This is sexting, which is different from oral sex, which is different from foreplay, which is different from X, which is different from Y, right? Like not to say that they're not all a part of a whole, but you can't assume that like I watch blowjob videos. So every blowjob will be this way or right. Like, or now I know how to give a blowjob. Yes. Because I've, you know I mean? Like you could, you could say that like, Oh, I'm going to choke on your dick. But if your gag reflex isn't good, then like, or if it's too good, you're not choking on anything. Yeah. So it's, you gotta be careful with the only thing I like. I think the only thing you gotta be careful with is, is, uh, not, not going too far in the sense of like, if the, if these are people that you do eventually want to have a sexual relationship, mm-hmm. don't, don't write checks. You're not willing to cash Yeah. in the sense of being like, I want you to fuck me in the ass, but you have no interest in anal yes, sex yes. because like, not to say that sexting equals consent, but if you put, if, if you, you say, I'm going to do X thing, if it you put stands thing, to yeah. reason that the person might think you're going to do X thing, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Like if you start putting offers on the table, yeah. someone might be like, yes, that one. Yeah. Uh, and then it would be really weird to be like, no, everything mm-hmm. I was saying also to you might was. might be unsafe if, if they think you've said yes, you know, not that they're in the right in this situation, yeah. but as we know, a lot of people suck out there. Yeah. So yeah, I think realize when it's appropriate to sext and to be sexted, realize that there's an element of, you know, curation and fakeness, uh, much like social media or porn. Uh, and then just like, don't become obsessed with it. Like someone with a porn addiction might. Yeah. And I think you'll be fine. And also if these are strangers, understand that the sexting, I, I think, is much easier to do with a complete stranger because you're far less inhibited, right? Yes. You don't have to worry mm-hmm. about what also, the, what your coworker is going to think. Yeah. And again, I'm operating under the guise of like consensual, yes. right? Like if you and your coworker have a flirty, flirty banter and you Wait. start sexting, uh, what, why would you need what? You don't just send them. You, you don't just Wait, send them. what? Um, is that not what the, the online for portal is for? Yeah. But I, I, you know, I feel like, uh, I would say I, w- I would jump into the filth much faster. For with sure, a, yeah. with a stranger than than trying to like test the waters yeah, and you can do and slowly the fuck you want. It's ramp up online anon- anonymity. So yeah. if they're down and you're down, you can go balls to the wall. Maybe literally. Mm-hmm. Also, they might be using pictures of other people you don't know. Yeah, right. It could be a very old weird man pretending he's a very young hot girl. I don't know. Or it could be a really hot girl pretending, pretending to be they're not as hot. Pretending to be an old weird man. Yeah. Uh. So I'm not going to read the question I teased earlier because in the In the interim, it deleted itself, but don't worry because this one actually fits what you said. So now it seems like I'm just being a good host. This is by In Shades of Grudge. What's a good response to a duplicate dick pic? I asked my partner for a dick pic and he sent one. An exact one he sent me from a little while ago. I double checked, lol. I want to respond with something flirty and fun that also says, come on, dude, take me a fresh picture and would love some advice. If it matters, we are both cishat. Uh, hmm. I wonder. This is tough. I mean... I get it because well let's let's dive into it. Why has he done this? Because I think we can both. I mean, depending on where he is, it's not always pertinent to 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 take a dick pic. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he could be out at a bar, yeah. or he could be with his aunt Donna. <laughs> yeah. Um. There's any number of reasons. Maybe he hasn't shaved, and mm-hmm. he doesn't like not. You know what I mean? He, or, he he prefers to keep it trimmed down there. Like maybe maybe he just took a good one. I was like, that's it. That's my good dick pic. Yeah. And he's happy with it. And like it's sometimes hard to get the angles, the lighting, the boner. I don't know. But I will say, I think if you've already sent it, granted, he's probably forgotten. I, I'm hoping that there's a, a, a period. Now. Mm-hmm. Hopefully this isn't like yesterday he sent this one. It was like, this will do again. Cause like you should know if you've got one dick pic and you've already sent someone a dick pic, For sure. then you should like, you can't get away with keep sending the same one. I, 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 I don't guess think maybe he just doesn't understand. Like maybe he's like, oh, did you delete it? Here it is. Like, yeah. It, the, here it, I gave it to you already yeah. there. 
Um, I think it's probably my guess is it's either a, a significant amount of time passed and he forgot mm-hmm. or did it when he had horny it's brain. The fucking dick police, man. Um, or this man is sending so many dick pics out that he forgot that he had sent this one to her. Uh, any number of things could yeah. be possible. Cause I'm I've, I've definitely just, done that. I'm guessing he just had a good one and he sent it. And that's like, it's in his fucking files as like, that's my good dick pic. And he's not thinking, oh, she needs a fresh dick pic. She's just gonna be like, that's my dick. Uh, so I, I bet think, when he gets a picture of her tits, he's not like, I've got, I've seen those tits I think, before. I think you, like, I think any, again, unless it's like you get one, like once every, like, sure. Like if I, you're I doing think, them every day. Yeah. But even still, if someone sent me pictures of their boobs like a month ago yes. and then sent the exact same picture again, I would yeah. be like, so the time is, yeah, is a thing. Um, for me, okay. How do you get this dude to send a new one? I would say something along the lines of like, look, I've already seen the greatest hits. I want something from the back catalog or like, I want a deep cut. You know what I mean? Uh, or just like, I already saw that one, like welling up eyes emoji. <laughs> Give me a new dick. Yeah. Like, I feel like you, if you're cute and like positive and like sexy or like funny, you can get away with it. If you're just like, what the fuck? You already sent me that one. Like, that's not the way. Yeah. You definitely need to include emojis in this because no matter how you write it, it's going to yes. come. It doesn't matter what. This is one of those situations. Unlike the first one, you, you almost have to wink. Yes. Yeah. You can't you, not wink. They can need, never wink. You, you now need have a their, smirk. Yeah. You need a wink. You need a, a drooly Maybe emoji. You need to start eggplanting. Yeah. You need to, you need to definitely make it so that he knows that this is not a judgment. You're not mad. Yeah. They're like, cause let me tell you, there ain't no bone are going to be happening. If he's like, Oh no, I'm scared. Yeah. What do they do? It fucked up. Just hit them with a, like the message you want to get across. doesn't really matter how you do it. Once there are emojis in a playful slash sexy tone, is I like your dick and I want to see more of it. I want to see more of not it. like that's it. That's what you want to get across. And Be that's like, important. I refuse to accept another dick pic from you unless you have today's newspaper. I want it slab dad yeah. right beside today's newspaper. Yeah, I want dick. ink on it. When yeah. You pull it off much like fish and chips that <laughs> fell out of its enclosure. <laughs> I was going to make a fish and chip joke too. Oh, yeah. I miss when they wrapped. I don't know why, but it was just better. It was. I really hope his dick isn't that greasy though. I yeah. Yeah. Or as deep fried. <laughs> yeah. Although, although I think I have no interest in putting a, a penis in my mouth, but I think if it was deep fried, <laughs> that would I make would, it slightly better. I would consider it. Actually, I don't know. Cause that would be a violence. I'm assuming this is a disembodied dick. I assume it's just a dick, right? I wouldn't want to just have a dick in my mouth, but if it was breaded and maybe had some marinara sauce mm-hmm. or some ranch, honey, garlic. Are you ready for the first round of this game today? Yeah. So Ben 10 inspired me. Um, okay. Because we had wonderful Ben 10 names. So I'm going to read you four Transformer names, and you're going to tell me which one isn't real. Okay. Right? So we got Blowpipe, Erector, Cancer, and Mr. Grill. <laughs> cancer. Um, <laughs> Blowpipe. Blowpipe, Erector, yeah. Cancer, and Mr. Grill. I... Hmm. This is tough because I feel like blowpipe sounds like a, like an eighties transformer for sure. Cancer makes me feel like there was probably at some point in time, like an, like a, like an astrology. Like I'm sure there's like a Sagittarius and a Capricorn. Maybe he's a PSA. Uh, yeah. Or maybe he just, (laughs) he just smokes a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe he was part of the, the cartoon heroes save that kid who did weed. Um, I'm going to go Mr. Grill sounds the least transformery, but I'm going to go with Erector. Mr. Grill was the one yeah. that was fake. Okay. That's round one. I thought it was a, I thought it was a, a trick. You got two more rounds. Okay. You got two more rounds. Uh, you got a question for me? Yeah. Or do you um, want to do all three right now? N- no, we'll do another one. Uh, I was going to do, well, I guess we're still, we're really early. We're blowing through. I know. These. It's I crawling. Know. Um, so I might have time to do another one. This is from Vast Blackberry and a bunch of numbers. One person only casual sex seems ridiculous. I know. Curious if there are any men out there who would be happy finding one woman to have a friends with benefits slash situationship with. Here's what I mean. Both people miss sex, but are too scared to do casual hookups because STDs and neither are interested in dating for a serious relationship or just don't have the energy for dating at all. Is it realistic to find men who don't want a committed relationship? but don't want casual sex with various women. Yeah. 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 Like, probably. If you have a good fuck buddy thing going on, a lot of the time it's like needs are basically met. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like barring wonderful things happening. I, I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like you could be, you know, it, it takes a little bit of the, I don't know. Like, yeah, for sure. There's I, definitely been, been stretches of me having casual things with like a, 
I, w- I won't say one person, but like a main, but person. a consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like depending on how everything else is going, it's like maybe they're main person for a week, and, or the only person for a week or something. You know? Yeah, and I guess like I guess the danger of this is one: do you do you need it to be exclusive? Yes, that's that's the, the or, stumbling block for me. Whereas it's like, are they like, hey, we're doing this, we're casual, but we're exclusive because then you're not casual. Yeah, and then I, I wouldn't mean, do it's it. it's weird because I feel like this is, and I know what you're saying, and I agree. But like, if, yeah, I guess if, if, I guess you are monogamous, like, I guess you're in a monogamous relationship, regardless of whether you want to call it casual or serious, right? Like monogamy is one singular partner. It might not be a romantic monogamous. It could Mm -hmm. be a sexually monogamous relationship. And like, if you want that, that's fine. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't. I think you would need to be very, very specific about the rules of this, right? And I think, I think the likelihood of someone catching feelings it's pretty high or the likelihood of somebody meeting somebody else and like cheating on you. Yeah. Inverted, you know, quotation marks, because like what's cheating and what isn't, you can't be like, Oh no, we're, we only see each other seeing other people is cheating. Blah, 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 blah. We're but casual. casual. We're fucking casual. Yeah. I'm telling you, bud. So I think you need to have that conversation of being like, look, the, I only want to sleep with one person. I only want to sleep with you. And I would like that from you as well because of the, you know, SCI yeah, risks yeah. and because of, you know, it's, it's too fucking hard dating. I think a lot of people jump at that opportunity, yeah. but you need to go and be like, if you meet someone totally cool, just let me know. We need something. to, we need to have a conversation. And it's like, and maybe depending on what you want to pursue with them, maybe we all agree to get tested yeah. right off the bat and all agree to use protection. Mm-hmm. And then, cause if it, yeah, if it is a, an STI thing and it's like, you might be cool if everyone's got a clean bill of health and you know, I'm yeah. guessing it isn't fully about that, but yeah. But if it is, it's like there are, there are ways to introduce new partners yeah. into the situation. And it might be something as simple as like, okay, before we keep doing this, let's all go get tested. If everyone is yeah. is on the clear, then we can continue doing this. Yeah. However, at this point, keep everyone abreast yeah. of, you know, partner developments, et cetera. Yeah. And then just be like, you know, if, if anything goes one way or the other, please let me know. And and I think that's the, the way to do it. Will you find someone who wants this? Sure. I think the more specific you get with what you're looking for, the harder it's going to be to find. Yes. Um, and also, like, the more you want a thing while calling it something else. Yeah. And, it's, like, I'm also, like, I feel like you, you're going to need to do a lot of dating before you find, find someone, someone you want to yeah. do this, right? At which like, point, you're just doing what you don't want to do anyway. So. Yeah. Because, like, I wouldn't want to be like, hey, are you cool with this? Cool, cool, cool. And then we get to, and we have no sexual chemistry or no chemistry yeah. at all. Or the sex is bad. Or, and like, every time I meet someone, like, you cool with this? No? Okay. Yeah. Next one, I guess. And then it's like, you don't know if that person could have been rad or not. You know? That's the thing. It's like, I feel like you're you're either going to jump into something that's not going to be 100% or you're going to miss opportunities. Like, I feel like you're still going to have to do the thing you don't want to do in order to get the thing that you want. And at which point you're just dating. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you're pretty much in a relationship after that. So it's, it's tough. It's doable. I don't think you should be too worried about being like, this is the hardest I'm, I'm revolutionizing dating yeah. here. Cause you are just you're pretty much doing, you know, you're dating. Yeah. <laughs> I also just like, I want people to to stop trying to get monogamy without saying the word. You yeah. know what I mean? Be realistic with yourself about what you're asking for, because it's very frustrating to have to have that conversation with someone where they're like, no, we're not monogamous. We just won't see anybody else. I'm like, okay. So, yeah. you know, it's not poison. It's just a, a foreign substance in your bloodstream that's killing you. <laughs> mm. That's, I mean, I think a lot of people hear the word monogamy nowadays and, and like think it's a bad word or alternatively think anything other than monogamy is a bad word but I, like you just break it down into what the word means and it's just like one per like one singular hmm. so if one wh- love right what, isn't it gammy yeah or like partner or oh, yeah. something similar like who that who knows yeah latin um but it's like it, like that's it like break it down into like just etymology of being like the here it is this is what it means so it's like it doesn't matter whether or not we're married or dating or mm. casual or whatever like all those things can be true and you can be monogamous all of them. Yeah. So like sure. it's it just, yeah, just be honest with yourself and don't shy away from words yeah. and intentions mm-hmm. just because you're afraid or want to see cooler than you are. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or you're trying to like backdoor into something that you don't feel like you can. Mm. Cause I think a lot of people want like monogamy off the bat, but like, no, they can't ask for it because that's kind of weird. 
Yeah. But then they try to like be like, oh, it's not monogamy. They just can't see anybody else. Like, yeah. okay, shut the fuck up. All right. You ready? Yes. Transformers. Okay. Round two. Hot House. Okay. Big Daddy. Yeah. Cranium. Okay. Discharge. Damn. See, I'm I'm torn between Hot House and Big Daddy. I, I'm gonna go Big Daddy because that's that's Bioshock. Hot House is a tomato, which also <laughs> makes me think that you might throw that in. But I'm gonna go with Big Daddy. It's Cranium. Damn. Okay. Yeah, Hot House, Big Daddy, and Discharge are all. <laughs> I mean, discharge. Like I said, like that's why, like Erector and whatever the other one was, where I'm like a blowpipe. I'm like, yeah, 100. percent The 80s were wild. Like, look at the names of GI Joe characters and cops characters. Like, they're all fucking batshit. Yeah. All right. This is by the Iron Boys. Ooh. At what point can you actually be your genuine self in a relationship? I know the basic rules to seduction. I don't have an issue with it. I just noticed where I start being my genuine self and carefree in a relationship, the girl suddenly loses interest when they were the one that did most of pursuing and initiated relationship vibes first. Don't get me wrong, I've also dated some women that wanted to marry me and settle down, but I hesitate to commit because of me being hurt in the past by the previous women that suddenly lost interest as soon as I started catching real feelings. I'm scared that it will happen again. So where do we draw the line here? Is it possible to ever truly be your 100% true carefree self and still be able to maintain a healthy, loving relationship? I see other couples where they can literally be sloppy together and have a ride or die Bonnie and Clyde type of relationship. For some reason, I haven't been able to experience that deep type, that type of deep love and loyalty. I'm not the most loyal guy in the world. But one of the reasons is because I know these girls are talking to other guys and cheating too. So I may as well see other girls on the side so I don't feel as bad about it. It's more of a defense mechanism. As simply as it sounds, I do wonder if true love actually exists where you don't have to put on an act to avoid losing attraction. God. <laughs> it, it was really sad at first, and then it got hey, it was even still sad. sadder. <laughs> like, the dude, if you can't figure out, what, like, I'm this weird bro persona of what I think, what me, other men on the internet who also aren't in a relationship are telling me to be, uh, I'm doing this fake bullshit. And then when I stop doing it, the women that I've managed to, to attract based on this fake bullshit lose interest in me. Yeah, dude. So it's really weird. Like a few weeks into my relationship, I kind of just changed everything about me. <laughs> and then the people that liked the old me were like, whoa, I don't like new me. That's fucked up of women, right? It's definitely women's fault. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, think of it the other way. It was like, think of, now, here's a crazy idea. Think about who you are as a person, mm -hmm. as your true, genuine self. Now, imagine you started dating someone by being that person. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you started acting the way that you do mm -hmm. prior to. Totally differently. That's the thing. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what you go from. It's true. To. Yeah. If you go from A to B. It doesn't matter if A sucks and B is great or A sucks and B is or You know Yes, I mean. yeah. You're changing. Yeah. You're becoming a different person. So to not have the wherewithal to be like, I was something and now I changed something else. And the person that liked the first thing weirdly doesn't seem to like the second thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, even if what, the, like, the next one was better, I would be so confused that you're different. And then, okay, that, yes, I think we all agree Meanwhile, on that. Meanwhile, I'm cheating on all these women. Right. And then you're like, oh, how do these people find these these people that love them and ride or die, the Bonnie and Clydes? Uh, I don't trust any of the women that I've ever dated. Mm -hmm. And either I'm cheating because of insecurity or fear. And like, how do I, how do I be my, it's mm -hmm. like, so it sounds and like. also some women are interested in me, with me, but I turn them down because I'm scared about them turning me down. I was like. What? What are you doing? Yeah. What? Hey, you know what you need? You don't need a, a girlfriend or a partner or a genuine Bonnie and Clyde ride or die. You need a therapist. Yeah. If you're Bonnie, Clyde needs to be sitting across a desk from <laughs> you with a notepad going, how do you feel about that? Yeah, you need Bonnie and Freud. Hey, I like that. <laughs> right? Freud sucks. Though, so so maybe... Freud is so bad. <laughs> um, Freud's just like, is it your dad's dick? Yeah. Have you matched with your aunt on Grinder? <laughs> Freud would have a fucking field day with that one. Yeah. It's, I think Freud would have a field day with like dating apps in with, general. With fucking Discharge, the Transformer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, certainly with Big Daddy. I'm Big Daddy. Big Daddy, <gasps> he would love. It's all coming together. Also, Cra actually, I don't know if Cranium isn't a Transformer. I realize I never looked that up. It could be. <laughs> it could be. I think if you name, if you say any word, there's like an 80% chance that it is in fact a, either a Transformer or at the very least an 80s cartoon character. Uh, no, but there's one called Hardhead. <laughs> there you go. Ramjet. I, yeah. Damn. I'm telling you, the 80s were wild. The Transformers were wild. 
Uh, you need a lot of help. You need so much also, work. Get the fuck off seduction, man. Yeah. I also love that you're like, I understand the the I understand the seduction techniques, and I'm cool with it. This is where that leads you. Yes, the, I mean that. I, I, once again, seduction teetering on the edge of of self awareness. Yeah. I get all the seduction. I understand it. I'm cool with that. However, all the things I do from it have ruined my life. Yeah, have mm. left me a insecure, crippled, like emotionally crippled mess. Uh, it's so bad, dude. It is so 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 bad. You need to get help. Mm -hmm. You need to stop dating. You need to get off the internet mm -hmm. and you need to talk to a mental health specialist yes. and get therapy and deal with your insecurities because yes. you are chocked full of them. Oh my God. You need to be able to be yourself first, yes. first and foremost. Is everyone like that? No. Can you work on bettering yourself? For sure. But like, you can't be this fake persona. That That's it. No, that's, you just can't because again, you have two choices there and it's either fake persona forever. That's bad. Or it's, fake persona until we got you on the hook and then change at which point you're just gonna look like a crazy person and, and that fucking fake persona is probably turning so many people off anyway so it's like you're not really losing out and if your true genuine self is also turning people away and you can't find a partner while you're being this mm -hmm. true genuine self maybe you need to reflect on yes two things what that genuine self is mm -hmm. and the people you're trying to attract yeah if you're a, a nice person who is kind and, and empathetic mm -hmm. and caring, and that's not what these people that you're trying to attract are, it sounds like you're trying to attract terrible people. Mm -hmm. Or you're going about it a weird way, and you might be a nice guy who's being a nice guy, right? Where it's like anything they say, you're like, yeah, I'll do it. Or like they say a thing and you're like, I agree. I love, you know. Because being a nice guy isn't being a nice guy. Yeah. No, no, no I, yeah, I get it. And so it was, I'm just saying you could be good and go about it the wrong way. Yeah. And then the people aren't terrible because I don't think we need to encourage this man to blame. But I would I would say at that point, you're being bad. It's. Yes. Right. Like I'm saying if, to if, realize that that's. Yeah. You if, know. if your genuine self is toxic, then that's that's what yes, you need to no, work on. Sure, right. For sure. Um, so I think like I think you need to look at like the two things like who am I and who are the people I'm trying to attract. Yeah. And. If those don't mesh, then perhaps you need to you you need to reconcile whether the the people you're trying one of them to, needs to change. Yeah, and you need to realize why and how. Yes, and then make steps. Most of which probably involving therapy. And yeah, and most and of getting them, away from seduction. Get away from it, dude. You're almost there. You've almost figured it out. Yeah, you're so close to achieving achieving true sentience. Yeah, but uh, bad, 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 bad. Uh, this is Brunette Fiesta. Guy I'm dating has a female flatmate. Female, 24. Went on a first date with male, 27 yesterday, which was perfect. We've actually gone to college together, but never spoke back then. He's a walking green flag so far. He just told me his flatmate is a girl, which I'm a bit flabbergasted at because he didn't reveal this before. <laughs> Have you ever dated someone who lived with the opposite gender? I've never been in this position, and I do get kind of insecure. You need to calm down. She's flabbergasted. I'm, I'm my guests. They're flabbered. <laughs> Every guest that I own has been flabbered. Like, girl, I, I love that she's like kind of accusing, like very accusatory tone a la, you know, you made me queer, the accusatory <laughs> podcast. She's like, how dare he not tell me? Or yeah. can you imagine like, hey, how's it going? I live with a woman. I just like, what? what? I, live, I live with a woman. What is the natural way to bring that up in there conversation? Isn't. There, there is no, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's an insane. Because it's not a, it's not of note. Like I used to have a roommate for a very long mm -hmm. time and I could well, you count. Never, you never told me this. <laughs> well, it was a dude. So it's fine. Oh yeah. Like that's, I love in this world. It's like, if you're bi, you just can't have roommates. You <laughs> yeah. have to be wealthy. If yeah. you're bi, you gotta be. This, I mean, that's the thing. There's, there's two things. One, we're in late stage capitalism, baby. Yeah. You take who you get yeah. to pay half your rent. It doesn't matter. I don't they, care if they're alive. They're <laughs> good. That's it. It like, could be Chainsaw Dave. Running around. Yeah, Chainsaw Dave's not that bad. I mean, you're not getting your security deposit back. No, but, but like you knew what you were getting into. He's with. always on time with rent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, you're paying half the rent. That's all I need because no one can pay rent by themselves. Yeah. It's a fucking nightmare out there. So the fact that you think you have the, the, the position to criticize who anyone lives with. And look, I would get it if you went over and they the roommate like curled up together on the couch in their underwear. Like, yeah. Or it's like when they came home, he, she ran over and gave him an open mouth kiss. Be like, hey, how was your day? You know what I mean? Hey, like, honey, <laughs> how was work? I would get Who's it. Who's this tramp? Yeah. Who's this whore you brought home again? Yeah. Uh, I, I would understand. If you if, get there and there's only one bed. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, it's late stage capitalism. Can you afford two can, beds? Oh, you can afford two beds? 
uh, I would get that if if you went and and there was more to this question of being like they're cuddly, they're holding hands, they go yeah. on dates, they yes, she calls them pookie wookie for sure. And it's like I get that, yeah. but if it's if, just lives with other gender, no, you don't have to report. Like, okay, great. He's now told you that he lives with a woman. Does he then have to go and give you a coworker list of like all oh, the women? Wait, does he work with women? Uh, he could. Okay. Well, what if he's on the bus? Are there women? Are there the women bus? there? It's like that's kind of like wait. Oh, he was he went to the bar and the bartender was a woman. The bartender was a fucking woman, and he didn't say anything. And the bus driver was a woman. I no, <sighs> I'm out. This guy's a piece of shit. He's a slut. <laughs> he's an absolute monster. Yeah, this is this is bad, and you need to instead of seeking like what is wrong and like how to move. You know, it's nothing to do with them or the situation. Look inward. I mean, your last sentence is, is I get kind of insecure. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah. You kinda? do. Yeah. 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 And that, you know, whose problem that is yours, not his. Yeah. Don't make it. Well, it no. will be, I'll bet you anything by now. <laughs> it is. It's, his. it's not his roommates. You're cool. Don't worry about it. Like people don't genu- genuinely, not genuinely. They don't genuinely sleep with their roommate. <laughs> they always do it in a fake sense. No, they don't generally do that. And if they do, it's going to be bad and obvious. And also, he could have also slept with somebody else. If he's that kind of person, having a roommate or not isn't going to alter shit. That's the thing is like, right? if he's going to, if he's going to cheat on you, yeah. if he's Mr. Non loyal fake man, <laughs> has he changed his personality a hundred percent in the last couple of yeah. days? And you say he's a walking green flag. So hopefully there's For enough now. green flags there yeah. that say, oh, he's not going to cheat on me. He's not going to fuck his roommate. Mm. He's capable of being friends with women. Like, is that not a green flag of being like, yeah. oh, He's capable of being respectful of a woman in their own space. He even shares his bed with her. That's how kind <laughs> yeah. he is. He helps her shower. Yeah. It's every now and then. He'll spoon feed her. Yeah. With the spoons his dick. Yeah. Every now and then and he'll the have sex with her when she's lonely. Um, it's you need to chill the fuck out. Yeah. This is, I hope, like your moment of like, oh, I do get insecure and you're teetering and you need to fall off on the getting over it side and not the doubling down side. Yeah. Because, like, what's the other option? Yeah. It was on the date with someone. He wasn't great, but he does live with a guy. Yeah, great. Fantastic. He does yeah. live alone. Perfect. Let's- cheaters are going to cheat. She's going to cheat. And that's the thing. It's like, there's nothing you can do to be like, if you're dating someone who wants to cheat on you, you can't just be like, oh, I'm, I'm on point every day. They're about to cheat. I'm yeah. there. I, I, just, I see this person. Oh, I slide in the way. It's like, fuck, man. I'm so glad my, my boyfriend's still loyal. Because if they're trying to cheat and you're somehow getting in the way of it, they're not loyal. Yeah. They're just unsuccessful. Yep. You know what I mean? So, like, you can't. This isn't a thing you can do. It's bad or it's good. And that's it. Yeah. Him living with a girl isn't going to change shit. Nope. Uh, Ready for the final round? Yes. Now, you got to really think about this one. Okay. All right. I've done really poorly so far. This is... You know what? I'm going to give them out of order. You pick a number two, one, and four. Actually, that's going to be a nightmare. You're going to forget them. Yeah. <laughs> Jack shot. Okay. Lube. <laughs> okay. Drill nuts. Uh-huh. Lord Dumatron. There's no way lube is a transformer. Please tell me that. No, lube. I'm going with lube. Okay. I'm Instead of telling you which one the right one is, I'm going to say you are incorrect. Lube is a transformer. No. Cars get lube. Oil. I, yeah, I get it. <laughs> But I would have figured at some point in nope. time, someone at Hasbro would be like, we can't name them Lube. There is a Lube. So you have Jack Shot, Drill Nuts, and Lord Dumatron. I'm going to go Drill Nuts. Drill Nuts is a Transformer. <laughs> what the fuck? And then Lord Dumatron? Lord Dumatron is a Transformer. And you know what? So is Jack Shot. All four of those <laughs> are fucking Transformers, right? Okay. I don't feel bad then. Yeah, I'm sorry. That one, I just, I had 12 names and, or I had enough that I could do two groups of four and then the last one was four and then we'll cut one. <laughs> Damn. Fair. There's so many more. There's a whole thing called the breast force. What? <laughs> yeah. And I don't know why. I do not know why. Breast force. Breast force. And not beast force? No, there's also beast force. Yeah, I know that there's the beasts. I'm well aware of the beast wars. No, breast force transformers. They're Death Saurus's elite troopers. <laughs> Why breast? I don't know. The, <laughs> AKA the Destrons or the chest masters. What? I guess like maybe they transform out of their chest. They derive their unusual name from the breast animals. They are partners with, which transform from their eponymous breastplate armor into an autonomous, at- oh, autonomous robot animal or handheld blaster. Okay. Hey, that must've been a wild merchandise meeting. One of them is called kill bison. Hell yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Transformers. Yeah. 
What are you doing? I, they're just doing whatever the fuck they want, yeah. evidently. There's just one pervert. Yeah. Being like, all right, hey, like, uh Backshot? Yes. Yeah, there's one also called Backshot. So there's <laughs> Jackshot and Backshot. It's like Steve, we uh we, we got a new Transformer cartoon coming up. What uh we're gonna need a, a couple more names, he's like <laughs> Oh Spism. Spism Jizz Master. There's one called can't. Laser Cock. <laughs> it's like, of course there is. It's like it's just like 13 year old perpetual 13 year old boy yeah. being asked to come up with robot names. Yeah. This one's called, this one's called titty blaster. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Hasbro? Someone has to stop you. Oh, there's one called squeeze play as well. Of course there is. Is that like a, ba- a baseball? I, I also think there's one. And I, I don't know if I could say the word I would. I know if you don't know, if you can say the know. word, it's no, not then, great. no, then don't say it. If you, yeah. if you have to ask that question, uh, I, do we need tinders after how hot those transformers were? Yeah, no, the, the transformers. I mean, I'm more concerned about the heat of this room. It is insane. It's yeah. very, very hot. And I know that you're probably all tired of hearing us talk about it, but <laughs> deal it's, with it. Guess what? It's hot. We do it for you. And this is the price that you pay. Uh, speaking of the price that you pay, if you'd like to support the show, mm-hmm. please consider heading on over to our Patreon for an extra bonus episode every month. And what we're doing now is we're doing deep dives. We're doing yeah. how to guides. We're doing, a topic. we're doing a like TED talk on a thing. So the first two was uh, going out, meeting people. One of our biggest questions, how do you meet people? Yeah. Well, we've we've talked about it. We've we've given you some advice, some sage advice. Mm-hmm. So and this far, is from you can two meet people. people who who did we this? We met people. We met so many people. We did very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the next one is about first dates. So when you go out and you meet someone, you get a phone number. Yeah. Now you we can go, got you. Now you can take them out on a great first date. Yeah, they're fun. They're funny. They're informative. If your friend likes to change their personality a couple of weeks into dating <laughs> someone, get them to fucking listen to it. Yeah. Um. And we got other. You know, we love you. That's it. We do love you. Ready? You. Yeah. Thank you, Josh Eagle, Mahar Vases for the song "Paper Stars." And this is a tweet by a man holding a, a weird looking drink on a plane in a suit. He looks like the kind of guy in university who asked questions and wore suit to class. Right. Um, I'm 18 years old. I'm famous. No idea who this is. I'm extremely attractive. I'm not going to comment. I'm an alpha male. <laughs> also not going to comment. I am very wealthy. I'm a role model. My secret. Guess what the secret is? Not respecting women. I simply don't listen to women. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Uh, Who knew it was that easy? Damn. Notice how he didn't say, I'm not single. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> yeah. No shit, dude. I'm so alone. Yeah. You can be all those things and still be a piece of shit and a loser. Hey, most of those things aren't correct. I can't tell whether or not he's wealthy, but if he is, I'll bet his shithead father gave him some shithead money. Yeah. Or he's like Bitcoin wealthy. He's crypto wealthy. He's mm-hmm. got a shit ton of those cool monkey NFTs. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for listening, friends. My name is Dane Miller. And I'm Niall Spain. We've been your fuck buddies. And much like the Transformer, I'm about to get heat stroke. <laughs>